I'm Manalo, Mike Manalo from the Nerds of Color. How are you, Rami? <laughs> I, I like it. I like what you're doing, Mike. It works. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Um, let me just say, it is it's an honor to speak with you. You are one of the greatest actors working today, and I have been a fan for so long. So I hope I don't come off as unprofessional, but man, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, oh, that makes me feel great. Thank you. It's a pleasure <laughs> to speak with you. Of course, of course. Um, so if I may say, you are a man of many masks, both metaphorically as a versatile actor, <laughs> but also physically. And I remember this being one of your first iconic masks. And yes. you are now switching it out for Safin uh, and his iconic mask. Uh, I wanted to ask if you ever worry about mask fatigue at this point in your career, or would you be happy to approach another role with a mask? <laughs> Ah, that's a, I've, I've not had that question and I've been doing a lot of press for this film so far. I guess the whole thing about mask fatigue is what I do for a living, right? I mean, every day I, I put on a mask to try to transform into something different. So whether it's actually a figure, figurative or literal mask, it's just part of my DNA as an actor. So, uh, you know, that was just a, another... Uh, element that we got to bring to this film, give you a little suspense at the beginning of what you think might be a horror film, like a yeah. French noir horror film. Hats off to, to Carrie for coming up with an a unusual way to start a Bond film, something we've never seen before. And uh, I, I think that mask will be very haunting for people. Uh, I wish I got to keep the mask. I think that's in Carrie's possession right now, but... Uh -huh. We've got fairly close, Karen, Carrie and I. I know where he lives in New York, so I may sneak in sometime and, and borrow it. No, he needs to give it to you. Um, the next time I talk to Carrie, I'm like, Rami needs that mask, yo. Um, uh, <laughs> fair, <kidding>. fair. <laughs> I'll take all the help I can get. Um, I wanted to say, uh, you add so much soul to Safin. Um, in my opinion, uh, it's just one of the most human characters uh, for a Bond villain that we've ever seen. Uh, and his initial mission is incredibly understandable. It's super sympathetic. Um, so when you approach a Bond villain, um, how challenging is it to find that sense of humanity uh, in characters that could be written off as archetypical madmen? Yes, that's the thing. I wanted to remove remove all archetype from my performance and find something fresh and new. Uh, for me, that's that's always what I think about in terms of preparing something that's shocking, but not for the sake of just shock value that makes sense for the story. Hmm. Uh, for me, thinking about the overall effect of the film is the most important. What I have to do to facilitate, help facilitate uh, Daniel's trajectory through all of these films that he's done, five years, the investment that he's made. So you have to go outside of yourself and think, ooh, I don't need to do this character with extreme panache. It has to make sense. What, what's the most threatening? Uh, mm -hmm. So you, I never wanted to create a character that was abrasive, loud, uh, petulant. I wanted a guy who had a strength in his, his confidence and, and so secure that he didn't have to raise his voice. He didn't have to, uh, you know, come up with these kind of contrivances, but was very true to himself, owned himself, and at some times, or practically all the time, felt more powerful and more uh, capable than Bond himself. Don't think about hero or villain. Make Bond the villain. Yeah. Well, you crushed that, sir. And this movie is amazing. Thank you so much. This has been one of the greatest honors of my journalistic career. Oh, so man. Oh, thank you for everything. Too much. Sir. Too much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pleasure. Pleasure. Comics, movies, and TV. Yeah. Pop culture with a different perspective. Watch it on your screen. Hit play. So check this.